Do you want any sort of uh, request for a comment down below? Like, no, they're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> they're gonna do it anyway. <laughs>whole lot of questions to get through today. Number one, best Seiko diver. Yeah, so I think everybody wants to... Volume higher. Yes, so um, everybody, I think, want, you know, they, they all want these reference numbers. Like, was that the SPG, the BBK, the whatever, I don't know. SKF007? Well, yeah, okay. I, this I know that, yeah, yeah. This one I know. Now I would say the turtle. I like the turtle. Mm -hmm. Why? Because um, I guess it's it's a it's a case shape that a lot of people don't like. It's kind of cushion or C shape, whatever you want to call it. But that's exactly why I like it because it it's different than most of the other Seiko models, but it also looks like many other divers or many other watches in this cushion shape. So I think it's kind of like a bridge between Seiko and like other brands. So that's why I think it's interesting, and it was. You know, a very affordable watch. Still is a very affordable watch, mm -hmm. um, like most Seikos actually. Um, it's pretty indestructible. Um, has a good weight, good size. Do you have a Seiko diver now? Um, I have. Uh, or in the past, have I had, had yes, one. I, I I've had. I have. Actually, I don't have modern Seikos. Only vintage. And I have a, a modern, a little Grand Seiko, right? Mm -hmm, Which mm -hmm. is not a diver. But so. Um, so what's your answer? Turtle. Turtle. Yeah. Okay. It's funny that you mention shapes and names and things like that because Turtle is named, I think, after the case shape, yeah. but is like not the most ergonomic shape for a watch. Absolutely. I'm going to go with a tuna offshoot, mm. and I haven't tried one on, but I think it wears like a tuna can. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's called like the Urban Safari yes. They have like the brown or one, green one, yeah, beige one. All these like earth tone yeah. kind of things, and on a rubber strap. Um, but you can get an automatic one. They're only like a couple hundred bucks. Yep. I was thinking about very cool. saying the Setsu 2 MAS, mm -hmm. but I can't like in good conscience like recommend like a four thousand dollar Seiko over. Yeah, Setsu yeah. 2 Moss, whatever. They're just too expensive, and that's like kind of not the point of a Seiko diver. Um, so I'm gonna go Urban Safari, whatever that means. Tuna. Um, that's how I you think dress they do yesterday. Like quartz in the yeah Urban oh, Safari. So, you see, you know what yeah. that means. It makes a better outfit than it does a watch. We have to cut to, well, we don't have a photo of you yesterday, but it was very Urban Safari, I can tell you that much. Yeah, it's a whole lot. Yeah, it's good. No, but that's a, that's a cool um, line. It's, it's like three watches, I said. Right? Yeah. That was my favorite, I, actually, because I think the original tune is a bit big. Yeah, I mean, this one's like 43 millimeters these are and like smaller. 13 millimeter thick, but it's like the, the LUDs are basically non-existent. Yeah. So it's like 43 millimeter diameter and probably like 45 um, Lot to lot. Or like, you know, it's not bad at all. No, it's cool. It's cool watch. Cool pick. Nice. Yeah. My turn. Oh, oh. Best vintage cycle. Well, based off of your last answer, you're going to like this one because you have a lot of vintage cycles. That's psychos. why I said, ooh, ooh. Um, You know, I love weird and wacky stuff. I'm tempted to say the Jajaro series, ooh, yes. you know, like the super alien. far, yeah, the Alien Ripley one. Yes. Uh, the chronograph with the, um, that whole like extra chunk yeah, on the yeah. side. Yep. Um, the funky pushers. The funky pushers. There's no technical term for whatever that is. Funky pusher. Funky pushers. I would be tempted to say that, but it's like, it's one of those watches I've almost bought it, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to wear it four times. I'm going to spend probably too much money on it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to want to sell it. It's like, it's a flash in the pan. It's a lot of fun for first few wears. And then you're like, I think my incitement would fall off after mm. that. I'll tell you one that... Um, I've mentioned in a few videos um, fairly recently. That was is my actual go-to answer. Mm -hmm. um, 1964 Tokyo Olympics first Seiko chronograph, chronograph yes. manual wind um, mono pusher. Yeah. Um, awesome. With the rotating bezel, yeah. there's the five seven one seven, the five seven one nine. I'm gonna. There's also a five seven one eight, but that's like a different watch, and it, there's like two of them in the world, and they're like sixty thousand dollars or something like that. Um, but the 5717, 5719, um, that's my actual answer. 
I would love to, this, I'm gonna get some heat for this maybe, do like a vintage Seiko mod for Aiken watch. Because one has a better handset, one has a better bezel, and I've seen them combined before and it's... Because you have like black bezel and steel bezel. Yeah, so the black bezel I believe was earlier, it was a Bakelite yeah. bezel, yeah. Um, and then they got replaced by a steel yeah. which is sturdier. Yeah. Um, so I don't wanna like, but the one with the Bakelite bezel has the better hands, the one with the steel bezel has a date which I don't like. Um, so I, I want to mix and match, although I know that's sacrilegious. We saw them at the um, at the Psycho Museum in Tokyo. We did. We the did. Top, top floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, that's the only uh, vintage Psycho that I have saved on my search list and like certain websites and stuff. Because I've, I've always wanted to get one of those. I never did. <clears throat> but I like them. They're really, really cool. They're getting more expensive, and I hope that Seiko re-releases it. I mean, this is the 2024 is the 60th anniversary. Yeah. It is also an Olympic year. Um, not that they're involved at this point. And the 100th um, anniversary of Cycle. Exactly. So it could be cool. Um, yeah. Although I would definitely, I would get a modern version if they came out with a modern version. Mm -hmm. But the vintage ones still out there in the great. Yeah, the vintage is nice. Yeah, that's, that's a good answer. Mine is probably the 6139 uh, mm -hmm. Dash. I think it's 77, the one that I it's have. It's the Pogue, right? It's, so it's not the Pogue, but it's the same movement as the Pogue. Got it, yeah. I think mine is the 77, so 7070. And it's a smaller, on a bracelet, it's a smaller um, like um, size than the Pog. It has um, kind of like a grayish blue dial with a super cool um, bracelet. The 6139 is just like an iconic movement, you know? It's, well, yeah. it's, to many, that's the first automatic chronograph. Arguably the first, if you ask. Yeah. It's definitely the first non-Swiss Of course, yeah. chronograph. Uh, automatic chronograph. It's just a great watch. I, I have it, as I said, it has a great size. The, the How you set the day and the date is also cool because you have to push the crown, like and depending on how far you push it in, it, it's the, cha the date or the date uh, oh, changes. Okay. Yeah, it's really your cool. Positions on yeah, 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 it's exactly like that. So so that's my for 6139, but yours is also a cool pick. Okay, so we both, both went with early Chronographs. Yes, like. Like, so, yeah. Well, so yours is earlier, so it's 64, you yeah, said? Yeah, I mean, it's like barely of the line of what a chronograph yeah. is because there's, it's, it's, it's a mono pusher and it's um, just the seconds hand that moves. Yeah, and mine is a 69, so. First proper chronograph, first 10 player chronograph. Yeah, that's what they say. Nice. Go for it. Best date just. Hmm. Best date just. Um, you have one. Or at least one. Yes. That I know of. Yes. The two tone. Um, I'm really not good with reference numbers, um, but I like the early ones. You know, like the I'm talking about the '60s and stuff before the dial became flat. When you said like the pie pan dial. Yeah, exactly. Sigma dials mm -hmm. with the white gold uh, indexes, linen dials and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be. I, I I'm not going to give you a reference. But I, I really like those because they're virtually the same size and everything as the later models, but there's a teeny tiny, you know, twist with the dial, as I said, with the Sigma dial or with the with the pattern, and I like those little things. And you can get engine turn vessels on those Yeah, not to mention early ones as well. Yeah, exactly. So I don't I don't like the ones in the earliest ones with the alpha hands. I think they're alpha hands, right? The ones that are mm -hmm. the very, very first ones, but the ones that came after, which kind of looks like a 60s day just, but it could also be like an 80s day just. But because it's 60s, you have those little nuances, like as I said, the curved dial and the, the sigma, so the gold, white gold indexes and things like that. That's my sweet spot when it comes to day just. Then again, my day just is from the 80s. It's a two tone, so yeah. it's a complete. Okay, but you're going OG yeah. day just. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So 1601 and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it hasn't changed that much right. over time. But yeah, why not go back to where it all began? Yeah, absolutely. I would go. You know I'm a big Turnograph fan. Yeah. That one came to mind pretty quickly. I think, though, what I like the most is probably just a Buckley dial. Mm -hmm. I think they just look good. They're just attractive. I, you know, you can't really say much more than that. And for those of you who, are, who don't know what a Buckley dial is, can you explain? It's a Roman numeral dial. But I will say there's multiple, or a couple different Roman numeral dials out there. The ones with the applied numerals I think are disproportionate. They're just kind of like a little short and look a little off. Um, Buckley is a printed Roman numeral. It's a little more stretched out. Um, I think it just visually 
works a little bit better. And you have gray ones, look, which look really good. You have blue Buckleys as well. And then I think I've seen like some champagne ones as well. And it's named after John Buckley. And if you're lucky and you walk around 47th Street, you might meet the man yeah, in just Tuscany Rose on the- 20 minutes north of here, yeah. There you go, yeah. Basically Rolex history, you can touch and feel. I don't suggest you touch John Buckley without tanning him first, but you could. Yeah, I've never really been a Datejust guy. I'm kind of warming up now that they're getting a little bit freakier with the palm dials and things like that. Like I would choose a Santos to kind of fill in for mm -hmm. that. But with a Buckley, it's you get that Cartier feel, yeah, true. but with more Rolex dependability, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, best of both worlds for me. Yeah. Okay, Thomas, best perpetual calendar. Ooh, um, God, there are so many options here. Yes. Um, and you can get really technical really quickly. Um, yeah. Patek comes to mind first. My favorite one is the 5038G. Um, dial is set up like a 3940, mm -hmm. um, but it's white Roman numerals on a black background, which is like my favorite combination. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it has like alpha hands or something like that and a hobnail Clou de Paris bezel around it. I think it's just incredibly tasteful. Plus you have the protect, you know, blood running through yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Running through those Ooh. veins. DNA. Um, I'm also tempted to go, uh, Breguet did one designed by <laughs> Daniel Roth. Um, okay. Which has a bunch of like tiny little bubbles floating around. Mm -hmm. It looks like, yep. it looks like an early like iPhone with all the little yeah. apps and stuff. Um, and the guilloche is obviously incredible. But my real answer, and here's my philosophy, if I get a perpetual calendar, I would kind of want that to be like my exit watch, like my one watch to do it all. So I would go a little bit more sporty than dressy if I feel like if I got a protect, if I got a brigade, I would like need a Samariner or something else to balance mm -hmm. it out. I would do something that we saw yesterday, which is a Royal Oak perpetual calendar. You get brains, you get brawn. I've seen one with a mother of pearl dial as well. Royal Oak. Perpetual calendar. Talked about a go anywhere, do anything kind of watch. Uh, that's your Gata watch? I As well. I Could be. I don't think I would do better than that, yeah, let me no, just say. No. And it's and I will say, I thought about Landa as well. They made awesome perpetual calendars, but they they wear like a biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's not an ergonomically designed watch. And then the Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar, you get that same functionality in a Royal Oak case mm -hmm. at under 10 millimeter stack. Yeah. That's, no, all of them. I like all of them, all three of them. I would go with uh, IWC. I thought you were going to say 3940. I thought about it, but when you said sporty, I was like, oh my God, he's going he's gonna, to you know, bring in the IWC. I actually like, um, I like the Patek stuff and yeah, especially, you know, the 39s, but, um, but I, I would go IWC. IWC has some of the best deals on perpetual calendars out there. Like they have da Vinci's and stuff. multiple yeah. under $10,000. Yeah. Solid gold yeah. perpetual calendars with like date wheels and yeah. things like that that are incredibly accurate to, I don't know, the next thousand years or whatever. Um, there's the Portofino, there's the Novacento, there's the Da Vinci, there's the Ingenieur solid gold perpetual calendar designed by Gerald Genta for under $10,000. Which one would you do? Probably Da Vinci. Yeah. Well, you need a chronograph in there too. Yeah, and that's a, that's like a cla I think that's like a classic. You know. I I think the hesitation there, why they're not more expensive, is the that like floating circle, the yeah, floating yeah. case shape. I don't know that I could live with that. So see, if I so that wouldn't be my exit watch or my Gata watch. Yeah. So I would you know I would have my and at that price it wouldn't have to be. Yeah. And so I would have my, my speedies and my subs and this and that. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I think that it's, it's such a, it's a, it's a bit of an unloved design, as you said. And, and uh, I think the watch deserves more love. So I would, I would pick that just for that. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Kurt Klaus was the designer of that movement. He did, yes. That was, I believe, the first perpetual calendar um, adjusted only by the crown. And he's such a sweet gentleman. I've met him a few times. I think he's in his 80s, 90s now. So he's he's in. Yeah, he's he was gentleman. in some ads for IWC. Yeah, there's a funny ago. ads in like yeah. an Apple Watch kind of. Ad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's Brilliant. A, he's yeah. super funny guy. Or, well, gentleman, mm -hmm. funny guy. Um, but respect, Mr. Class. <laughs> no, he's not. He, full respect. Like he's he's just a, a very nice person. 
And, um, you know, he's like, again, like, just like Buckley, like living watch history. Yeah. And the watch is connected to him. So I like these, you know, like these, you can go with emotional connections to watches and people and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, there's a lot of history behind the Da Vinci Perpetual Calendar. There's like articles you could write about just that watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that would be my pick. Okay. Um, money is no object. Would that still be your pick? No, probably a Patek. Yeah, I'll probably go Patek then. But I'm more of a, you know, fifty nine seventy. Because my my pick is like seventy. Forty times more expensive. Yeah, than yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, no. I could then I could do something else. But uh, but uh, no, no. Fifty nine seventy thirty seven. They're not perpetual calendars. But you know, I like those watches when it comes to Patek. But yeah. But if money is no object, sure. But otherwise, I would say Da Vinci. Okay. Yeah. All things considered, Da Vinci. All right. I like that. Next question. Best pilot watch. Ooh, ooh. Hmm. Best pilot watch. Vintage or modern? Well, because it's a, you know. Up to you, bad boy. Yeah. There's a lot of options, right? There's like the Breguet Type Twenty. Uh huh. There's the Navitimer. I will say the brands here are a little bit more focused than just like Chronograph, for example, or yeah, Diver, yeah. for example. So see, for me, like a pilot's watch. Or at least back in the day, was connected to a chronograph because they needed mm -hmm. the chronograph as a navigational tool. Now, so it has to be a chronograph. Now, when we think of well, not that it has to be. Well, well, yeah, okay. Well, you can have a GMT, for example, mm -hmm. um, or just like an IWC. Like, I mean, there are time yeah, time and date only IWCs, or yeah. you know, that are just like. Because the thing, there's like a legibility factor as well. I think True. once you're in the plane and like, especially yeah. a small plane and like your hands moving around, you know, a lot of the kind of calculation factors and things like that are not the easiest to read in the moment. This is true. This is true. Yet, I'm going to give you an answer. And I know I've used this answer or used this watch as an answer before. Floor is yours. For, for another complication. But that's my personal favorite. And I have one of those. And that's the Omega Flightmaster 910. Okay. Because it is called Flight Master. It's the master of flights. It's in the name. It's in the name. Nomen est omen, as they say in Latin. See, I thought you were going to go 1675 GMT. No, the because Chris has age it. I can't, of I can't talk about the watch I don't own at the moment. So, You own it. It's just, it's, it's the, guy, behind the, the guy operating the camera is holding his watch. Behind right the now. camera. But, <laughs> but no, or it's almost in front of the camera. There you go. Really breaking the fourth wall on this one, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is this would be my this would be my my second choice. Okay. So, because um, it's a great watch with it's a great, a great second choice. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So the Flightmaster is we talked about this the last time when it was a GMT. You asked me um, my favorite GMT, and I said that one. And you know, I said um, it was like an Apple Watch at the time. You said you said there's a lot of apps on this watch, and it's true. A lot of right? apps. Oh, it's a GMT yeah. chronograph. Uh, internal rotating bezel, but it is meant to be a pilot's watch. Mm -hmm. It was designed for pilots. There's, a, there's one of the hands is a plane. Except, yeah, exactly. And also the case back, you have the. They shouldn't the, be more obvious. With yeah, it. yeah. So I think I think that's a that's a that's a great choice. Or I could also say as a modern option, um, Breitling Emergency. I saw that uh, on those are cool. I, on a lot of pilots' wrists. It's taken me a while to come around to that watch mm -hmm. because it has like digital displays like yeah. built into and then the big. Uh, Antenna thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that that would be either Flightmaster or the emergency, it's like vintage Flightmaster, modern emergency. Okay, okay. And I've seen pilots wearing both, so they're like legit. So, professional approved. Absolutely stamped. Okay. Science to deliver. I think um, you kind of have to do complications for this one, like you said. I know IWC does a, well, one, it's an IWC, so that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. They do like a world timer chronograph. So like, mm -hmm. if you're up in the air, you gotta be prepared for anything. I think those two complications would kind of get you through most scenarios. Yeah. Um, if I had to buy one, if I had to spend my hard earned money, I actually only worked that hard, you know that. But um, if I had to spend my money, the one that I fell in love with is vintage, Brightly Navitimer, mm -hmm. I think it's the 806 with like the Venus yeah, yeah. movement. Oh, this is a nice one. Yeah, yeah, they're just they're really pretty. It's iconic, incredibly busy. Yeah, the dial, Slide but rule. it's very balanced. I have no idea how to use any of the numbers on there. Um, Would you learn it? No. If I gift you one, Thomas, I'm going to give you this 806. But you have to know how to use the slide rule. Do you know what any of that stuff is Absolutely for? Absolutely not. 
and I don't have a Breitling, and, 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 and I'm not really a Breitling guy, but that's the only Breitling that I would, I would get vintage, that I'm really interested about, the 806. Exactly. I am not really a Breitling person anyways, but I love that watch. I didn't come around to it until I actually had it in my hands and on my wrist. And you know, it's funny because we use this word iconic a bit. Too know, much. Too much. It's, a, it's an overused <laughs> word, iconic, legendary. But it yeah. is really an iconic watch. Yeah, It definitely. really represents an era in watchmaking, but it, in history, but also it, that's the, the flagship model of the brand. Mm -hmm. So you know that that's a Breitling. When I think of Pilot's watches, when I think of Breitling watches, that is the first yeah, thing that comes to mind. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So you know it. You can see somebody on the subway, that's a Breitling Navi timer. And if it's not, it, what, that brand wants to copy the Navi timer. Exactly. It's so iconic. Yeah. So great yeah. answer. And they looked at. They yeah, they look good, and especially the vintage ones, they were smaller. Because at one point, Breitling, yeah. Breitling really went overboard with the sizes, I should say. But with that, yeah. I think it's like 39 or 40. So it's still, a rel even for, a, for a, somebody with a smaller wrist like you, mm -hmm. it's easily wearable. Next. Yeah, doable. Is it me? Uh, I think it's my... Wait, no, it is. It's yours. It's yours. Uh -huh. I don't want to get too greedy. Okay. So, best dialed stamp. Best dial stamp. I have one that is a lot of fun, but I think it's just a huge waste of money, uh, which is the which is kind of all of them. Um, not Tiffany, although that is also <laughs> a little more expensive than it should be. The Domino's Pizza one. I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 the day just. Yeah, the day just with the Domino's logo on it. Um, or any like real corporate logo. There's like Winn Dixie ones, there's mm -hmm. like Coca Cola, Coca -Cola ones yep. that were like corporate gifts. But I wouldn't want to check the time and be like reminded of work. You know, it's like who, it's, it's like if you have an Apple Watch and it's just like a work email all the time. It's like, it's just like a bummer. Um, and also a Domino's one, like, yeah, it's funny for like a week, but then you're going to spend like date just money on that. Just buy like a funny t-shirt or something if you really like need to be that guy. And I remember when they were, they were like, Dirt cheap because nobody wanted them like 10, 15 yeah, years dealers ago. Dealers used to swap the yeah, dials yeah. out for just like a, a plain silver. Exactly. Um, okay, real answer, and it's so badass. It's just uh, Conjar. Ooh, yeah. It's like um, Jordanian. Well, there's a lot of Middle Eastern. There's a uh, few, like Iranians, yeah. Jordanians. Um, um, Omani, I think, is like Omani. probably the most common, yeah. I would say. And the great thing about this is they usually show up on like really awesome watches. So you get a Daytona, you get an Ingenieur, GMT. A, what, a GMT, and then you know what? Let's just throw some swords on there. Ah, it's like, it's just... I mean, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So this is, okay, that's a... That's Daytona a, with some couple swords on there? They, they, oh. they look amazing. Yeah, look amazing. gets me going. It's like so like heavy metal in a way. I remember seeing these... Um, cheaper Longines uh, models back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they um, have them too. Yeah, um, and that was that was really really awesome. I think it was the '70s Longines with um, with the I think it was Jordanian, which is usually gifts by the, the yes. royal family or, or you know to, to whoever. So what I would pick, however, is um, it's not one specific design, and it's not Tiffany, but I like double signed dials, retailer stamps. Re mm -hmm. mm. So like. Meister in Germany, mm -hmm. or Bayer in Switzerland. Bayer, Turler, Sempercoe, exactly. Lena, yeah. I think. Then you, yeah. have, then you have a lot from South America that was big. So a lot of mm -hmm. the watches that you see coming from South America, you have the dealers. Gublin is another one. Yeah, Gublin is another one. So I, I like those. Um, I think they're, 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 you know, Tiffany, yes, cool. But again, Tiffany is a bit overused yeah. by, by now. I think it adds a nice time and place to yeah. the watch as well. It's, it's, really, it's really cool because it, it, it and it's, it's you got a, the papers right on the dial, baby. Well, on the one hand, yes. And on the other, if you think about it, it's like brands had so much trust in these businesses to say, hey, this is our... And you know brands, they're super, super careful about their design and say, hey, put your name on it. Of course. Yeah, you're selling it. The Swiss are not notoriously easygoing people. That's what no, we're saying. <laughs> no. But they were like, yeah, sure. It's an Omega or a Rolex or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's from Meister in Germany. Yeah, yeah print Meister on it. And that's, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a great, I guess, gesture from the, from the, from the industry, to do. So I always and enjoy those. Doesn't ones. happen anymore. No, so. I have a friend of mine. I, I, I managed to um, source a Omega Dynamic, you know, with the, yep, the change interchangeable uh, bracelet and strap. Your but, most underrated Omega. 
from the previous go. episode. And exactly, and that's the one that that uh, I found for him was the is a classic with white and blue, mm -hmm. and it has a Meister uh, stamp on it. Nice, and it's super cool. It's like a four five hundred euro watch, but this Meister stamp makes it even more special, I think. Yeah, and I think it's cool, like people are like, oh, my family heritage is from this part of the world. Yeah. I can find a retailer from this yeah. part of the world to add my own little flair to it. Absolutely. So that's cool. Um, my turn, yeah? Next. Best Daytona. I'm tempted to say Conjar now that I, now that I called him out 62, specifically. 63, Paul Newman, this and that. Patrizzi Dial, la 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 la. Mm -hmm. um, I would say This Zenit, is a question with a lot of right answers. Zenit, Zenit, yeah, Zenit Daytona for me. Okay, yeah. Because it is, again, it looks like a regular Daytona. Mm -hmm. It's like the, if you know, you know, kind of Daytona. Definitely, yeah. Because you don't see it, right? A 62, 63, or a Paul Newman, whatever, you, you, you see it. But is any Daytona you don't. And an average Joe, it's just like a, a regular Daytona. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting chapter in yeah. both it, companies' histories. Absolutely. And imagine it's like Rolex, what it is today. They would, they would never do something like that, I feel. No. No. So that's, that's really a special time. And it's, it wasn't that long ago. I've heard criticism that they're overpriced because it's not in-house. Uh, oof, I don't know. Like, because they are pretty popular, Yeah. there's going to be some natural pushback against that. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's, it's possible. But then the same thing, I talked about my transitional Speedmaster, which looks like a 321, mm -hmm. but inside it's already an 861. So again, it's like, if you know, you know kind of watch. And I think... Like to me, the, the, the Zenit Daytona is, is the same category. Like if you know, oh yeah, that's a nice uh, neo vintage Daytona. Well, it's not only that, but it's a Zenit Daytona. They don't make that anymore. Oh, cool. Well, it's my favorite. What's yours? Conjar. Uh, no, I mean, and I want to skip over a lot of like the early Paul Newman stuff. It just hasn't done it for me, and especially now that the prices are incredibly high, it's even more of a Factor, thank you. Part of me wants to say white gold, oyster flex, 116519, with maybe a meteorite dial, just to get a little Ooh, crazy, nice just to be guy. like that guy. Yeah. Um, He's in his flashy mood today. Yeah, I am. Um, my whole life has been a flashy mood. Uh, Don't go there. My real answer, and it's kind of a cop out, is pre Daytona, mm. sits two, three, eight. Mm. I think they're gorgeous. Yeah. Black dial would be my go-to and it's very opposite of the meteorite in that it's just very subtle it is very tasteful it was before daytona was even on the dial so it's not even a daytona technically i know i'm cheating it's like but a, yeah but it's a, it's yeah vintage it's a beautiful vintage watch and they're underpriced i think because they're not daytona's they, by name yeah 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 you can live with that and it's for me the screw down pushers on the Daytona just like through the whole like center of gravity off yeah. and it just doesn't look that great. I get, I get your point. And I think, I, I, I actually I like the, crown, the screw down pushers. I think they're fun. They're not easy to use because, oh, I need to try and time something. Wait. Then where's the fun? Exactly. But still, that's, the fun is that there is no fun. Or the fun is that it's complicated. It's, it's, a, a, it's a chronograph that asks you not to use it. No, it's like having an iPhone or an Android. People say, people, like Android fans have to say, yeah, but Android, you can customize an iPhone. It's not like that. But that's the fun about the iPhone to the people like me, because I don't want to customize it's, it. Yeah, it's stable. Great. Out yeah. the box, yeah. yeah. Same with like a screw down pusher. Okay, next one. We're almost there. We're almost there. But before... Well, I'm so nervous. Be that's cool. Best 1980s watch. Ooh, I have one that just came to mind. You're never gonna guess it, but you're gonna love it. Um, mm -hmm. Part of me wants to say Santos. Um, so you have like Gordon Gecko on one end, mm -hmm. solid gold, Wall Street kind of thing, ostentatious, mm -hmm. money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. Another part of me, and feel free to steal this, would be G-Shock, much more like golden era of like consumer electronics. Absolutely. And also like taking Casio the keyboards. idea, yeah. Taking the idea of like toughness like to the extreme, I think is another like 80s mentality. Mm -hmm. Just like go, go, go to the moon kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the G-Shock is a classic. We both have yeah. Yeah. at least one. Yeah. Um, but my real answer, Seiko TV watch. Yeah, it's nice. I don't know how many of them they made. I don't think any of them really survived, but it was like a 
You also saw it in the museum. Yeah, in the Seiki Museum in Tokyo. Um, LCD screen and there's like a receiver that you plug into and you could like theoretically like watch the news or like watch a baseball game on yeah. it or something. To give us that a is just yeah. the 80s epitome of like doing something just because you can. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great answer. I, I love that watch. and as Because as, it was like the 80s was like such a time of like pretty rapid technological advancement yeah. and like incredible optimism as yeah. well. So they're just like, screw it. Why not put a TV on a watch? It's going to blow people's minds. So I like that one. Um, but the one brand that came to my mind, and maybe it was, maybe it was early 90s, not late, not 80s, late 80s, but you'll help me with that, is um, Abel. Yeah. And they're coming back now. Mm -hmm. Certain collectors are, are posting them again and buying them again. Um, Corner in the market, let's say. There you go. But I think, when we're talking 80s, right? It's more, it's like mid 80s. I don't know. I, I've to me, it's associated like more with the 90s. Could be. Could personally, be. but maybe they start in the 80s and then became a 90s thing. Do you have a backup answer just to be safe? Mm, backup answer? No. Okay, you want to double down? If, you know, we're going to get it in the comments anyways, if I was wrong. But Let's, this is the top of my head, so maybe it was early 90s. Okay. The cage design is very specific. It's not yeah. for everyone. I kind of like it. They have a world timer, which yeah. is so cool. They also make like perpetual calendars and stuff like that. Awesome they have bracelets. chronographs with El Primero yeah. movements, yeah. 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 which have gotten some attention as of late mm -hmm. um, for being like very underpriced. Mm -hmm. I mean, you basically sell for parts and make your money back. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the world timers, the Voyager is what it's called. Is my yeah, favorite. so to me, this is like the like '80s design. Of course, you have the Casios and all those digital watches. Mm -hmm. You're right. You had the watch with with like a TV remote control on it and stuff like that. Yeah, you have the Casio with a calculator built in. The which calculator is built in. Very yeah. Stranger Things esque. Yeah. Or like we talked about before, uh, the two tone day chests. Mm -hmm. Oyster quartz. Oyster quartz. Yes, I had an oyster quartz. It's also very very '80s. It's a great decade for watches. Yeah, it? yeah, and I think it's. Um, you know, those watches are not coming back anymore because now it's, it's focusing on the 90s. They came back. Some it's all cyclical. Some, it's like, yeah, some, some. it was 70s and now it's 90s and then it's going to be yeah. 80s and then we'll go back to 60s. It's now like, it's more 90s, but, but there's a lot of good stuff from the 80s um, watch design wise. I mean, I think, you know, like maybe 10 years ago was a bit cheap because it's like, I oh yeah, have this is like 20 years ago or 25 years ago. But now I think it's. You know, it's not 2005 anymore. It's not 2015 or 16. It's 2024, and uh, now the 80s is 40 years ago. So well, I should know. That was um, that was interesting time, and I, I, I like the watch design from there. Okay, Ebel, final answer. Ebel, I don't even Ebel, know. Ebel, 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 Ebel. Yeah. No one talks about it, so no one knows how to say it. E B E L. Uh, my turn, yeah. Last one. Last one. Best tutor. So Pelagos for me. Quick with that. Okay. Titanium. Why? Um, I don't know. Um, it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's just, no, no, I, I do know. It just works. I like the Black Bay. I like the 58, you know, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I think I told this before, a couple of Dubai Watch Weeks ago, I was there and um, Lukash from CH24PL, he was wearing his Pelagos. And for a few days, you know, we swapped. I was wearing his and I don't know what I was wearing at the time. And he had my watch for a few days. And I just love that watch. I love the size. I love the. I know it's a bigger watch. To, it's a big and thick watch, right? And I have a big wrist, so it's okay. for a reason. Yeah. For a reason, absolutely. I mean, because it's a tank. Yeah, and it. it, it yeah, you like hit it with a hammer and it's, be fine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's supposed to be like a bulletproof watch, and mm -hmm. it is. It was just super comfortable for me, and um, I think the fifty eight. I feel it's a bit too small. I like the wide GMT. Thirty nine is too small for you. Mm, because it's thick. So for the ah. for the width, it's kind of thick. It's like squatty, yeah. Kind of, yeah. And the BB Pro, the, the yeah, is is an epitome of proportions being a little bit off. Absolutely, and, and I mean I love those watches as well. Don't get me wrong, I think they're really cool. And, and I think many of my colleagues back in the day, our colleagues, uh, had uh, black base. Mm -hmm. Really, I, I remember seeing huh. like six, seven black base. So I think that was that was a great, great success for Tudor. But for me, yeah, I I, I personally like the Pelagos better. Um, and I like the, you know, the, the, the LHD, so the left hand mm -hmm. drive version or Destro, whatever you want to call it. Um, I love all of them, basically. Um, Marine Nacional, maybe not so much. Um, but Would we do Black Pelagos? Would you uh, Fitzlug or 
No. Removable mm. lug. Removable. Yeah, same. Yeah. Removable lug. Um, yeah, so the Pelagos, I think that's my, that's my, that's my final answer. And again, mm -hmm. I love the Black Bay and all the other ones. Um, the, the YGMT last year, I think came out last yep, year. we talked about that. Awesome. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Awesome watch. Final answer, Pelagos. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't think you'll get a lot of pushback on that. Um, and even if I do. I'm going to go, I love a Big Rose vintage Tudor, I think design-wise. Like, there's really cool hour markers. Obviously, the logo is awesome. The, the hands are pretty good as well. It's a way to get that kind of like oyster perpetual, but in a more affordable and, you know, maybe a little bit more character in there as well. Uh, but my real answer is it's kind of two. There's like a cheap version and there's a more affordable version. Chronograph. Um, which Shooter does not make a whole lot of. Monte Carlo is the expensive one, and the Tudor Heritage Chronograph, which they, not so long ago, discontinued. Yeah, so the Monte Carlo was the original one in yes. the 70s, and then they redid it, or re Yeah, I think the Monte it. Colors are like north of 10,000, and yeah, yeah, yeah. the Heritage ones are like three and a half. And it's coming two colors, as far as I can Yeah, I but remember. it's like, I feel like Tudor is moving more in the, like they're really banking on divers now. Um, it's going a little bit more subdued, and it's like, they're doing a very good job at doing that. But what I mm -hmm. like about the Monte Carlo and the Heritage Chronograph is there's like, it's funky, there's like square subdials and like a lot of orange in there. And it's just fun, it's cool. And I really want them to bring the watch back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I like those, I like the Monte Carlos, I like the re-editions as well. I have a friend who has one, that's his only good watch, or only watch that he... Burn! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no, he's, he's the only mechanical watch, I should say, okay. that he owns. Um, so I like them, I like them. And they're, they also have a bit of Daytona vibe. Yeah. Because the obvious connection. Um, but they're much more funky and much more colorful. And I think the original is, is amazing. I love that, I love that dial design, the colors, the blue, the orange. It's like McDonald's with the McRib. They can take it away, they can bring it back, I'm gonna love it every time. That's a perfect way to end this. Oh my God. I'm Thomas Hendricks, this is Ballish Frenzy. This has been plus or minus the Horde Watch Real Debate Show about the best and worst of the watch world. We'll see you soon.